Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. You, uh, you guys who have subscribed to the uh, channel, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't appreciate you enough for that. Please keep following back and coming back through and checking. Um, click the little bell that's right there next to the subscription button. So every time that I do these videos, you guys will get a, a message or an email or uh, however you have that set up on your end to come back and check out. We got something new that's from Premier Leather Crafters. Uh, today's video, I was, I've been thinking about this all day. And the thought was, sometimes as a crafter, we get um, so into a piece, we just keep piling on, kept piling on work, piling on tooling, piling on carving. And then before you know it, you have a piece that's so jumbled and busy. You have so much going on that it basically, it, uh, not basically, what it does, it takes away from the person who's seeing it. All they see is a bunch of stuff. And in crafting, to me, you want to have something that is a feature part of that artwork. You know, uh, be it even if you're doing Sheridan design, you don't want to have so much going on in your Sheridan design that it takes away from the actual flow of your scrolls as how they roll into your uh, your flowers. Because with Sheridan, you want it to be an even flow where the eye can just see a continuous run and nobody knows or finds how it's connected. But how does that apply to stamping work? Now, stamping can be so busy, and, and I've seen plenty of crafters do it, uh, especially when they get a new tool or something new, and they just want to just go to town with it, and it just overpowers the work. So, today's video is just simple stamping techniques, but, which is also, this is going to be a two-part video, because with just doing simple stamping techniques, you can change up the dyeing process and that will make a belt or whatever piece you're working on uh, just pop out. So being that belts is, is was really based, uh, really how I started out getting involved in this, belts, cuffs, ID bracelets, and what have you. So I'm gonna keep that simple and stay with that principle there. So I'm gonna give me an old belt blank and I'm going to go ahead and case it. I'm going to case the whole thing because we're going to, I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of different just stamping techniques today. And then um, in another video, which I will probably finish up tomorrow once everything cases and, and sets up. And then we'll, um, I'm going to touch on a little bit of um, using some... Um, Resoline to to uh, uh, resist uh, I, and and that's something else, you guys. I really I'm really liking this resoline. Hold on, just a minute. Let me reach up here and grab something for you guys. Well, did I get it or did I not get it? I think I bought it, but I don't know what I did with it. Um, same thing, resoline, super sheen, whichever one you try to use. There it is, right there, resoline. Really becoming a fan of Resoline as a resist. Really good stuff. Um, I'm still partial to my Super Sheen because I bought so much of it over the years. Uh, I got some big 32-ounce uh, bottles up there. But um, I'm still partial to my Resoline. I mean, my Super Sheen. Uh, you can, with Super Sheen, Satin, satin Sheen, or Resoline, anything that's going to resist. But with this second video... I want to go in there and show, I want to go into it and show you guys some different dyeing techniques to put on top of a simple stamping pattern and make the piece actually pop harder, which, and, and that will, because basically you can take one stamp, depending on how you use it and how you just do a simple stamping technique with one stamp, but the dyeing process or the antiquing process or the resisting techniques. On top of that, you can take a simple piece 
and then just make it really pop and be outstanding. So I'm going to pause the video several times so we doesn't this doesn't stretch out to be like a 20 or 30 minute video. So uh, I'll tell you guys leading up to what I'm going to be doing, how many times I'm going to be doing it, uh, especially like over the resisting process or the resisting technique. To where you guys already know from previous videos, that's a three-day, 72-hour process or uh, uh, something that you have to do to get a good resist finish before you start applying your dyes or your antique gels. But we're going to take that. So I'll be stopping the video. So this is actually going to be stretched out over the course of three days, but we're going to put all of this compressed into a time frame. I'm going to try to get this done in about 15 minutes or less. So that way you guys can see the basic stamping techniques and then we'll go off into the resisting part or the dyeing part. Now some of the other basic dye processes that we're going to be um, that I'll be doing, yeah, you don't need three days for that. Only on the resisting tech, uh, times. So let's get off into this. I'm going to stop the video and finish getting prepped up and ready and then you guys will come right on back and then we'll get right off into the stamping. Okay y'all and we're back. So what are we going to be doing here? Just making sure that my counter is counting. Um, what I've done, I did three separate templates. And this is if you're doing a belt pattern. Um, and if this is on a standard inch and a half belt that you'll be making for a customer. Uh, and I took my wing divider and I dropped me some border lines out. So, and you guys can see the double border line bevel let me make sure you guys can see that uh we did a double i did a double border line on both sides this is template one and then i did the same double border line but i spread my wing dividers out and hit my center point and scribed the line down the middle so the only difference between template one and template two is the line that's lightly and that's the thing i want you guys to understand uh, to remember about this one that's line scribed in the middle very light scribe not very deep a very light scribe uh, if you don't have a wing divider you can actually do this with a regular pencil but very light line just dark enough for you to see it and then template number three uh, the same double uh, border line with the wing divider but the difference in this is the the lines are spaced a little bit further apart a little bit further apart than the other two so we have template one double borderline no line scribed in the middle template two double borderline with a light line scribed down the middle and template three with the same double borderline but it's just spread out a little bit more and this is going to be going off into something and what i uh, chose and selected was three tools that we're going to uh, I'm going to be working with with you guys, and I was trying to find my third one, but again, this is just showing a simple technique, simple technique with uh, uh, various tools, and I think this is really going to help and work with you guys on these right here. So. We'll get the template three in just a second as soon as I find my other stamp that I was looking for. There it is, right there. All right, so, and, it's, and I wanted to give you guys the tools that we're working with here. So, let me get my bifocal so I can see these numbers. Old age, people, old age. And so, this, here, here we go. The three tools that we're going to be working with, that I'm going to be working with, is the, oops, upside down, the V412, the Vayner, and that's the V412, and that tool looks exactly like this. It's a Vayner tool, V412, and I'm also going to be working with the F941 which is the smooth triangle, triangular, uh, let's see if we can get this in the camera so you guys can see it. Maybe I need to bring it back. All right, the smooth vi uh, triangular beveler, F941. And then the last tool, which is a basket weave tool, 
and this is the X534. X534. Now, the thing with these tools is, uh, let's go to template one. And let's just work with template one because this technique um, or this particular piece here is just going to get a simple a simple basket weave stamp actually yeah a very simple basket weave stamp pause the video one more time alright here we go so the only thing that I did um, because the idea that came into my head wouldn't have worked with that first one so just remember that the first two templates one and two they're both they're both identical we're going to use two separate stamps on these two templates but they're be, the the they act exactly the same so we just i just went ahead and scribed my center line down the middle now let's get to doing some tooling work now and all i'm going to do and i'm taking the x543 x x534 the x534 stamp which is the basket weave stamp and all i'm going to do here is do a diagonal line with my stamp with my stamp tool here and it's going to match the bottom this is what's happening here we're going to make it match the bottom so all i did was just turn that tool at an angle to where one leg touched my interior borderline and the interior leg touch my center line that's scribed. Now, to, to copy that, I'm going to go right back and do the exact same opposite thing on the other side. On the other side. And we're just going to touch those two points and make sure that everything touches right. So, you should have so, just like this. It should look exactly like that. Just a sideways cross. Now, the only two that I added different, that I added to this to make this work, was the F926DD. F926DD, which is this tool here. And I'm going to put this right in there and make sure that my legs, my points match up with my center line. Make sure that really matches up. And I'm going to come right back with this tool here. Now, and this is exactly what the image and the graphics that we're getting. So I'm going to pause the video again finish tooling out this piece and then I'll be right back all righty all righty and we're back so now this and I'm gonna try to angle this camera so you guys can see the get the lights on this a little bit but this is the effect of what we're trying to achieve here you see the nice is just a regular basket weave pattern with the two turned a little differently and uh, I came back with the um, F9266, the F9266DD stamp, which is that center stamp in the middle. And this is all that's going to do to this piece. Now, of course, the only thing different, um, no more tooling, but I did take my modeling spoon and I just spooned back, just slightly beveled the inside and the outside of this borderline. Because this is going to be a feature part when uh, I get ready to dye this in the next video. And I did that to both sides. So you can take this, uh, even after you're tooling, you might want to do a light mist casing again. And then come back with your border tool so you can get that nice uh, bevel right there. Nothing too bevel. Just a nice modeling spoon with a little slight pressure. With turning my modeling tool 
to uh, about a 45 or a 35 degree angle right on the inside. And I'm going to try to show this just so I can show you real quick. Right on the inside and just going right down the interior and the exterior parts of this bordering line. And running that right down the outside of that. Again, taking your time. Leather work or leather crafting is really about taking your time and making something simple look great. Um, and now this is one of the pieces that will get resisted. Um, so you guys can, uh, well, actually this first piece, first stamp, and I need to write this down. The first stamp is not going to be resist. This is just a regular die technique. Just going to show you how to do a light fade with the die technique. So I'm going to stop the video here, this one all together, because we're at the 15 minute mark. And then we'll take right back up with this uh, video again tomorrow. And I will go ahead and start it work um, and get my edges rounded. So if this was a belt, you'll come back with your, your uh, edge rounder. And just take those, take these corners off. Take the corners off with your edge rounder. If this was a, going to be a finished piece, just take those edges and those corners off. Now, me, I like to take the corners off of both sides, the the top and the bottom, or the the flesh side and the grain side, simply because, and this is something that I picked up here recently. Because now my whole entire edge, edge is rounded. A lot of times you'll see a lot of crafters just take off the top part. Because uh, now if this was going to be an actual belt, uh, a two-part belt to where we got the eight to nine ounce, or the, not the eight to nine, but the seven ounce, uh, seven to eight ounce on the front. And then to line this with a nice 1.5 or two ounce. And then, then you will not bevel the inside of this piece. But uh, if this is going to get a lining, don't bevel. If you're going to line it, uh, if you're going to line it, don't bevel. If you are going to line it, um, if you're, I said that wrong. If you're not going to line it, it's round both sides. If you are going to put a liner on it, don't edge the inside part, the flesh side. Just leave it naturally uh, naturally raw because you're going to put a liner on there and then you would round off the um, the lining piece. Or And that's a different video to watch. I'll show you guys how to uh, skive these edges back to get a better edge. But that's another video. But basically, uh, I like to edge around both pieces because now when I come back with my edge slicker, my edge slicker is already oval shaped. And if you guys have one of these, you can look at your edge slicker and you can see that it's rounded on both sides. So this piece would fit perfect right there. And I think I will go ahead and, and round and slick these edges off. So leading into the next video. All right, you guys, we're going to stop the video right there. And uh, I think I'm just going to probably do multiple videos on this. And then we'll show you guys each piece that we're going to do. But if you're tooling this and you have the tools, definitely try this technique. And then this is leading up to the dyeing technique. Very simple tooling pattern, but it's the dyeing technique that this video is going to really focus on. So keeping the work simple, but we're going to make the dyeing technique really make this swatch pop and you guys can take this so if you have the tools uh one more time it is the the uh f926 dd which is that one uh the x534 which is the basket weave stamp these are the only two tools that i'm working with in this one piece it's not busy it's not come it's not uh, too jumbled is just all in how you lay it down, but it's the die technique that's gonna pipe this to make this piece pop. And again, um, I can't forget my modeling spoon to smooth bevel the interior and the exterior part of those border lines. So, with that being said, this is Robert the Leather Cowboy from Real Leather Crafters. Stay tuned, come right on back, uh, and just 
it'll probably these videos will be uploaded in sequence so you guys will know part one part two part three and how many parts it is till we can finish these out and then you guys can do these same steps at home or use these same technique patterns at home as i'm doing them here and every time they should match with what's going on even on the dying part so come right back this is robert the leather cowboy muhammad right here premier leather crafters in the dirty south See you guys on the other side. Peace.